Welcome, brave soul, to a journey through time, where the veil between the living and the dead is but a whisper. As we delve into the annals of history, we find ourselves surrounded by the spirits of those who once walked the earth, leaving an indelible mark on the sands of time. These spectral echoes, the ghosts of famous historical figures, have fascinating tales to tell. Tales that have been passed down through generations, some whispered in hushed tones, others etched in stone and ink. Imagine for a moment the grandeur of a royal court, the power pulsating through the corridors. Now picture a queen, regal yet tragic, her life abruptly ended by the cold swing of an executioner's blade. The ghost of Anne Boleyn, they say, still haunts the halls of the Tower of London, her spectral presence a chilling reminder of a life cut short. Or consider the noble figure of Abraham Lincoln, a leader of men, a beacon of hope in a time of despair. His spirit, it is said, continues to wander the White House, a spectral echo of the great emancipator, forever embedded in the fabric of the nation he fought so hard to unite. And who can forget the timeless beauty of Marie Antoinette, the ill-fated Queen of France? Her ghost too, they say, lingers on, a spectral embodiment of a life of opulence abruptly ended by the sharp kiss of the guillotine. These are but a few examples of the apparitions we will explore on our journey. Each one a testament to the unresolved issues, the unfinished business that ties these spirits to the mortal world. And as we delve deeper, we will uncover more about these enigmatic shadows of history, their lives, their deaths, and the spectral echoes they have left behind. So, brace yourself for we are about to embark on an adventure through time and space, where the line between the living and the dead blurs, where the past and the present collide. Prepare yourself for an encounter with the spectral echoes of our past. Our first tale unwinds in the cold stone corridors of the Tower of London, where Anne Boleyn, the ill-fated queen, met her tragic end. Anne Boleyn, a name that echoes through the annals of British history, a queen, a mother, and a woman who met a tragic end. Her tale is one that intertwines love, power, and betrayal, ending with her beheading in the year 1536. A fate she met within the unforgiving walls of the Tower of London. Historical records tell us that Anne was the second wife of King Henry VIII, a man notorious for his many marriages. Anne's charisma and wit had won the king's heart, but their happiness was not to last. As the years passed and Anne failed to produce a male heir, she fell from grace. Accused of adultery and treason, she was condemned to death. The place of execution, the Tower of London, a fortress that has seen centuries of history, a building that has witnessed the rise and fall of empires. It was here on a chilly morning in May that Anne Boleyn was led to the scaffold, her regal poise intact till the end. But the story doesn't end with her death. No, it seems that Anne Boleyn refuses to be silenced. For centuries, tales have circulated of her ghost haunting the Tower of London. Sightings speak of a headless figure wandering the tower grounds as if in search of something or someone. Some whisper that it's her innocence she seeks, lost forever in the ruthless game of thrones. And so, the Tower of London, once her prison, now serves as her eternal stage, a place where her spectral presence lingers a chilling reminder of her tragic fate. Anne Boleyn, a queen reduced to a ghostly figure, a spectral echo of a life cut short. No matter how many centuries pass, her story continues to captivate us. A tragic queen, a haunting specter, a figure etched in the stone and shadows of the Tower of London. Even in death, it seems, Anne Boleyn refuses to be forgotten. The tale of Anne Boleyn's ghost is a chilling reminder of her tragic fate. The echoes of her life and death reverberate through time, painting a spectral portrait of a queen who met her end far too soon. Her restless spirit is said to wander the historic halls of England, a headless apparition that embodies the chilling atmosphere of her tragic demise. It is said that on silent nights, her ghost can be seen, forever trapped in the final moments of her life. This spectral queen, once full of life and ambition, now roams the corridors of her past, a stark reminder of the price of power. Her tragic tale is etched in the stone walls of the Tower of London, where her life was brutally cut short. A queen in life, a restless spirit in death, 
Anne Boleyn's tale remains a haunting piece of history. From the bloody tower, we now cross the Atlantic to the White House, where Abraham Lincoln's spirit is said to roam. Abraham Lincoln, the 16th President of the United States, is a figure etched in history and memory. His leadership during the Civil War, his fight for the abolition of slavery, and his tragic assassination have cemented his legacy as one of America's greatest leaders. But his story doesn't end there. Lincoln's spirit is said to wander the halls of the White House, the place he once led the nation from. It was April 15, 1865, when Lincoln met his untimely end. He was attending a play at Ford's Theater when he was shot by John Wilkes Booth, a Confederate sympathizer. The wounded president was taken across the road to Peterson House, where he died the following morning. His life was cut short, but his spirit, it seems, was not ready to move on. Over the years, many have claimed to have encountered Lincoln's ghost within the White House. He's been seen peering out of windows, walking down hallways, and even knocking on doors. His apparition is often described as a tall, thin figure clad in his signature stovepipe hat. It's said that he appears most frequently in the Lincoln bedroom, which served as his office during his presidency. Even the most powerful individuals have reported these spectral sightings. First Lady Grace Coolidge, Prime Minister Winston Churchill and President Theodore Roosevelt all claim to have seen Lincoln's ghost during their time in the White House. It seems that Lincoln's spirit is particularly active during times of crisis or war, perhaps a reflection of his own turbulent presidency. But why does Lincoln's ghost linger in the White House? Some speculate it's because of his deep love for the nation and his unfinished work. Others believe it's his way of watching over the country he once led. Whatever the reason, these sightings serve as a chilling reminder of America's past and the enduring legacy of its 16th president. A great leader in life, a spectral presence in death, Abraham Lincoln's spirit seems tied to the place he once led from. Lincoln's ghost story is as compelling as his life, filled with an eerie sense of his unfulfilled destiny. The echoes of this spectral narrative reverberate through the hallowed halls of the White House where the 16th President of the United States is said to wander, lost in an eternal quest for resolution. Let's revisit the most chilling instances of Lincoln's ghostly appearances. Notable figures, including Queen Wilhelmina of the Netherlands and British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, have reported encounters with the spectral president. The Queen was reportedly awakened by a knock at her door, only to open it and faint at the sight of Lincoln's apparition. Churchill, on the other hand, emerged from his bath to find the ghostly figure leaning against the fireplace, causing him to quip, Good evening, Mr. President. You seem to have me at a disadvantage. The uncanny aura of Lincoln's presence continues to permeate the White House, a lingering reminder of his profound impact on the nation. A leader's duty, it seems, does not end with life. Lincoln's ghost remains a haunting figure in American history. From the White House, we journey to the opulent chambers of Versailles, where Marie Antoinette's spirit is said to linger. Marie Antoinette, the last Queen of France before the Revolution, has a story that is as engrossing as it is tragic. Born into Austrian nobility, she was thrust onto the French throne at a tender age, navigating a world of opulence and political intrigue. But as the French Revolution ignited, she found herself at the mercy of a populace desperate for change. In 1793, Marie Antoinette was executed by guillotine at the Place de la Révolution, her life brutally cut short. Yet her story did not end there. Numerous accounts suggest that her spirit has found no rest, that it remains in the place she once called home, the Grand Palace of Versailles. Imagine walking through the ornate halls of Versailles, only to encounter a figure from a bygone era, a figure that seems out of place. Many visitors have reported such an experience, claiming to have seen a woman who bears a striking resemblance to the ill-fated queen, complete with her elaborate 18th century attire. These sightings are often accompanied by a sense of unease, as if the past is reaching out to the present. Historians and paranormal enthusiasts alike have pondered over these accounts. Are they mere figments of an overactive imagination, or is there a grain of truth to them? Could Marie Antoinette's spirit really be haunting the palace, 
unable to break free from the grip of her tragic past. Psychologists suggest that such experiences may be a result of the brain trying to make sense of unfamiliar surroundings. Yet the consistency of these sightings, their vividness, and the profound impact they leave on those who experience them, suggest that something more may be at play. A queen in life, a spectral presence in death, Marie Antoinette's spirit seems tied to the palace she once called home. Despite the passage of time, the ghost of Marie Antoinette continues to captivate us, reminding us of a tumultuous period in history and the human cost of revolution. Marie Antoinette's ghost story is a chilling reminder of her tragic end and the turbulent time she lived in. As we delve deeper into the spectral tale, the most spine-tingling aspects emerge, painting a portrait of a spirit unable to find rest. Reports of her apparition are chilling in their consistency. Sightings often describe a woman in royal attire, her face a mask of sorrow and regret. Her presence is accompanied by a bone-chilling cold, a sensation that seems to seep into the very marrow of those who encounter her. There are whispers of an eerie silence that follows her spectral figure, a hush that seems to mute the world. Some have even claimed to hear the faint echo of her voice, a soft whimper that echoes the despair of her final moments. These haunting accounts make it clear. Marie Antoinette's spirit remains trapped in the mortal realm, a spectral reminder of a life cut short and a monarchy unraveled. Even in death, it seems, Marie Antoinette remains a figure of fascination. Our journey through the spectral world of history draws to a close, but the stories we've heard linger in the air. We've wandered through the echoing halls of the past, brushing against the cold, ethereal presence of those who've left their mark on the world. Anne Boleyn, Abraham Lincoln, Marie Antoinette, their names etched into the annals of history, their spirits, it seems, still clinging to the world they once knew. These spectral figures, their stories intertwined with our own, refuse to rest. They are more than mere memories or dusty chapters in a textbook. They are reminders of the unresolved, the unfinished, the unanswered. The trials of Anne Boleyn, the struggles of Abraham Lincoln, the downfall of Marie Antoinette, each carries a weight that transcends time, their spirits echoing with the unresolved issues of their lives. Consider Anne Boleyn, her spirit reportedly seen wandering the Tower of London, a haunting reminder of her tragic end. Then there's Abraham Lincoln, his phantom said to wander the White House, a testament to his undying dedication to his nation. And let's not forget Marie Antoinette, her ghostly presence felt in the halls of Versailles, a chilling echo of her tumultuous reign. These are not merely ghost stories, but narratives that weave themselves into the very fabric of our history. They serve as a chilling reminder that the past is never truly buried, that history is a living, breathing entity. It whispers to us in the rustle of ancient documents, echoes in the hallowed halls of old buildings, and sometimes it walks among us, refusing to rest. And so we find ourselves standing at the crossroads of the past and the present the living and the dead. We've heard the stories, felt the chill, and glimpsed the shadows. But the journey doesn't end here. There are countless more tales to be told, more spectral figures waiting in the wings of history. As we part ways, remember this. History is alive, in more ways than one. Until next time, keep your eyes open and your mind alert. You never know who you might encounter.